is going to count as one classroom credit and a half of a non-classroom credit for certified recycling professionals. Um, and we will be um, taking uh, attendance. If you are joining us by telephone, please email Cheryl Birmingham in our office and provide your telephone number so we can verify that. This morning we have um, a couple of really great guest speakers. And first I would like to um, introduce Brady Montazzi from uh, New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection. And um, she is with the Bureau of Solid Waste Permitting. So um, I'm going to ask Brady to now um, join us. Welcome Brady and I'm going to stop sharing. Okay, so good morning. I'm Brady Montosi. I'm with the Bureau of Solid Waste Permitting, specifically the Debris Management Unit. So I work with getting municipalities and counties a little bit more prepared for debris generating events. Today I'm going to be talking specifically about temporary debris management areas um why you need them and then i'll go over just a little bit about uh what's entailed on getting started in picking your tdma so if you don't already know a uh, temporary debris management area or tdma is a place where a county or municipality can temporarily store disaster event related debris until it can be transported to a landfill, transfer station, recycling facility, or other end market. Um, in Mars County, there are some TDMAs. There are two county sites and there are six municipalities with approved TDMAs. Um, if your municipality had a site during uh, Superstorm Sandy, you just want to know that unless you applied again for a permanent approval, the sites that were used during Sandy can no longer be used. You need to submit a new application. Um, in case you don't know if your municipality has a TDMA, um, just real briefly, the towns that have one are Booton, Chester, Madison, Mars Plains, Rockaway Borough, and Rockaway Township. So if you're not one of those municipalities, you currently don't have an approved TDMA. So talk a little bit about why you need a TDMA or do you need a TDMA? Um, first of all, having one is it's not required by law, but it is encouraged. Uh, the primary reason you would want an approved TDMA is uh, for FEMA reimbursement. If there's a federal event and you use a storage area without approval, you may or may not get your FEMA reimbursement. Um, you know, a TDMA is kind of like having an insurance policy. It's better to have it and never have to use it than not have one when you need it. Um, a TDMA is it's good forever. Uh, you don't have to reapply every year, but the you must recertify every five years just to confirm that the site conditions have not changed. Um, so the first topic is you, you need to prepare for worst case scenario. So in this case, the first is the end markets may not it may be inaccessible. Um, a land market is a landfill, a recycling center, or an other final disposal location. Um, if it's inaccessible, the facility that you normally take your debris to, um, the facility itself might be flooded or without power and therefore not operational. Uh, roads may be blocked with debris preventing trucks from getting to the facility or getting out of your municipality. The facilities itself um, might be full. Um, most facilities are only allowed to accept a certain amount of waste every day. So you have to consider that if we have a big enough storm, 
everybody in New Jersey is going to be in the same situation and everybody is going to be bringing more than normal amounts of debris to these facilities. So once they reach their capacity limit, um, they don't let any more haulers in to dispose of their debris. Um, and that also covered the end market might be full. You know, then you, you want to look at time and cost efficiency. Um, normally when you pick up waste or debris, you pick it up in smaller trucks. So if you have a lot more debris, these smaller trucks have to drive to an end market. It's a lot of smaller trucks making many, many trips. If you have a TDMA, what happens is these smaller trucks can deposit the debris at the TDMA. And then once you accumulate a lot, you can bring in the larger trucks to then bring it to the end market. Um, this, with regards to efficiency, that's one of the things that FEMA is going to look at. They're going to want to look and see that you've operated your debris operations in the most efficient way possible. And TDMAs can definitely help with that. Um, as I said before, FEMA reimbursement is should be a big incentive for you getting a TDMA. Uh, once T, uh, FEMA starts looking through all the reimbursement claims, one of the first things they do is they will call me and say, does this municipality or county have an approved TDMA? So they do check. Um, sometimes they don't check right away, but they will eventually check. And if you don't have an approved TDMA, uh, you might be putting your reimbursement in jeopardy. And last but not least, uh, having a TDMA can help you, you know, remove all the debris quicker. Quicker cleanups create happy residents. Um, you don't want to be fielding those calls from residents complaining that the uh, debris piles are still sitting in front of their house. So I can't stress this enough. Um, please do not store debris without a TDMA approval from us. Um, first of all, it's a solid waste violation and FEMA may not reimburse you for debris removal cost. Um, as much as I stress this, every time we have a storm event, there's always a handful of municipalities that have stored debris without getting a TDMA approval. So there's a couple situations where you can use your TDMA. Um, one, they can only be used when we have a debris generating event, and that can be a local event, a countywide event, a statewide event. Um, the first situation is you can activate your TDMA, your approved TDMA, when the governor declares a state of emergency and the DEP issues an administrative order. They usually go hand in hand. Um, it's very rare that a state of emergency is issued and we do not issue an administrative order. Um, in this case, if you have your approved TDMA, when you need to use it, all you need to do is either call or email us and say, we're activating our TDMA. You don't have to wait for a response or a formal approval. You can start to use your TDMA immediately. The second situation is if you have a debris generating event, but it's not large enough for the governor to declare a state of emergency or the state of emergency maybe was declared, but isn't in effect at the time you realize you need to activate your TDMA. <clears throat> so in this case, um, the activation procedure is just slightly different. You do have to call or email and request activation. But in this case, you have to wait for us to get back to you and approve it via enforcement discretion. Um, this is never an issue. I don't, if you request activation uh, fairly soon after the event, I don't think we've ever denied an activation request. If you don't activate it until, you know, a month or two after the event, then it's more likely we'll deny it. Uh, one of the things I want to stress is that 
if you have a big enough event and you're not sure if you're going to need it, it's probably easier to activate it and then let us know that you didn't need it after all rather than wait. Hi, Brady, it's Larry. Can I ask you a quick question? Sure. Could, could you define what you mean by debris if that includes all the vegetative material? Yes. Does it include snow, mud? Um, it does not so. include snow, but um, I do have a slide with lists all the types of debris that you can store. Okay, thanks. So I'll get to that in just a second. So um, a lot of you right now, I know it's probably one more thing on your list of things to do, uh, but I do want to stress that you, do, you don't want to wait until a storm event hits to apply for a TDMA. Um, I would encourage you to start thinking about it now. Um, in the event of a storm, the TDMA application still goes through our regular review process, and it does take a little bit of time. Uh, we have, you know, as always, limited staff to uh, process these applications. Currently, I'm the only one processing these applications, so you can imagine, you know, when we get a big enough storm, we have a sudden influx of applications, and I try to get through them as quickly as I can, but you know, I'm only one person. So, although I try to expedite it, it's possible that it can still take up to four weeks or maybe longer to get an approval. And you can't start using your TDMA until you get that approval. Um, submitting an application isn't enough. You have to wait until you get the final approval document. And the reason it, it does take a little while is, you know, I do my administrative review but then it goes through a technical review as well. Okay, so here's what Larry was asking about. Uh, what types of debris can be stored at a TDMA? So you can do vegetative, construction and demolition, bulky solid waste, white goods, e-waste, household hazardous waste, municipal solid waste. Um, we do not regulate snow storage, so you know, if you want to use your TDMA for snow storage, you can go ahead, but you don't need to activate it. Um, as you can see, the majority of towns that have a TDMA store vegetative. You can store as many or as few types of debris as you want. Uh, you have to, <coughs> you should consider what your facility, what your municipality needs. Uh, nine times out of 10, New Jersey usually gets, you know, hurricanes, winds, which results in a lot of branches and trees down, but probably not much else. Uh, if your municipality is more flood prone, then you want to consider that homeowners might be putting out you know, uh, wood, drywall, you know, furniture, white goods, that type of thing. So if you're in a municipality that has areas that flood on a regular basis, you might want to include all of these types of debris in your TDMA. Uh, you don't have to store all of them at one TDMA site. You can break it up into several sites throughout your town. Um, it's dependent on how you want to handle it, what the size of the areas you have available. Um, you can mix and match as much as you want. So here I'm going to talk just a little bit about the requirements of a TDMA, um, enough to kind of get you started and thinking about where you want to set up your TDMA. So first of all, you want to think about what types of debris you're going to need to store. Um, the second thing is storage surfaces. There are certain types of debris that require certain types of storage surfaces. The easiest uh, vegetative, C and D, and bulky solid waste can be stored pretty much anywhere, um, either on pervious or non-pervious. 
you can put them in a stockpile or in a container, whatever works for you. Then for the other types, for e-waste, household hazardous waste, and municipal solid waste, um, all of these must be in a container and must be on a paved surface. So you can't put a container on a grassy surface. The container must also be on a paved surface as well. And last but not least, white goods can must be on a paved surface, but you don't need to put them in a container. So this is one thing to consider when you're thinking about the location for your TDMA, thinking about what types of debris you want to store and whether the appropriate surfaces are available at that location. So when you start to think about choosing your TDMA location, you know, like I said, you think about what types of debris you want to store, what surface uh, stored surfaces are available. Um, does the municipality own the property? Uh, you prime, we prefer that the municipality own the property on which the TDMA is located. Otherwise, you have to get some sort of uh, use agreement between the municipality and whoever owns the property. So it, it really just makes it a lot easier if you uh, put it on municipally owned property. Um, you want to think about, is it easy to get to? Is it, you know, large enough to handle larger trucks or um, backhoes or whatever you might need to uh, move around the debris. You don't want to put it at the end of a tiny little dirt road that isn't wide enough to handle uh, the debris equipment that you need. <clears throat> you also want to consider your residence. Um, you know, when all possible, you don't want to put a TDMA right next to a residential area where they might be bothered by the noise. Uh, sometimes you have no choice but uh, you want to take that into consideration, especially if you plan on running your TDMA in the early morning or late evening hours. Um, and as I mentioned before, you can have one, more than one TDMA within a municipality. So some ideas for a TDMA location, parking lots, uh, municipal parks, vacant land if you have any available, uh, recreational fields, uh, convenience centers if you have one. Uh, you want to also consider, um, if you know offhand, whether any of these locations are located in an environmentally sensitive area. Primarily, you know, you want to uh, pay special attention if you're going to locate it in a park or recreational field area. Um, you know, are there streams nearby, wetlands, uh, is it encumbered by green acres? Uh, I generally see most of the municipalities use either parking lots um, or municipal parks or parking lots within the municipal parks. Um, it's up to you, what, you know, whatever type of facility you have available. Uh, you do one thing to consider as well is if you're going to put them in parks or on the recreational fields, we do require that you restore the property to its original condition once you stop using the TDMA. So you want to consider if you have a brand new, you know, baseball field, football field, soccer field, um, you may not want to risk ruining it by using heavy equipment. Uh, you know, if you have a newly paved parking lot, it, you know, it could be damaged by the bulldozers, you know, scraping up the debris and loading it. So those things, you know, you want to consider uh, potential damage. So there's three parts of the TDMA review process. First comes the administrative review. Uh, the form is a, it's an easy to fill out four page form. 
just a lot of like name and address information and a lot of check boxes. You'll indicate, you know, what you want to store and the size of the stockpiles or containers that you want to use. You'll also have to submit a site drawing uh, showing the location of all the stockpiles and containers. And the site drawing doesn't need to be anything complicated. It can, you know, the easiest thing is to print out a, you know, aerial view from Google Maps and hand draw in where you want your stockpiles and just label them with the type of debris and dimensions. Uh, we do have a instruction uh, form that goes along with the actual TDMA application and it's really helpful. It'll take you step by step through every question. Uh, once the form is considered uh, administratively complete, then it gets sent for the technical review. And this is when our uh, different groups will review it for environmentally sensitive areas. So it gets looked at by green acres, endangered species, flood hazard, wetlands, stormwater, uh, historic preservation, water supply, and if appropriate, it also goes through the Pinelands and Highlands Review. So all of these groups will look at the location and determine whether or not it's in an environmentally sensitive area. So once all the technical groups look at it and give their okay, then the final approval document gets written up. Um, it's a six or seven page document that will outline all the details of the TDMA location, what you're allowed to store, um, what other controls need to be in place, uh, and that gets signed off by our management. And then you'll get a copy of that. So our instructions and TDMA form are available online at our website. So I'll leave that up there for a minute or so, so you have time to copy it down. Um, you know, once again, the, the form is a fillable PDF. And I'm definitely, you know, I'm available to help you once you start going out, you know, going through the form. If you have any questions, you know, feel free to email me, call me. I'll be happy to walk you through it. Uh, if you have questions about where you might want to set up a TDMA, you know, I'm here to answer any and all of your questions to help you through the process. Hi, Brady. So, I see one question just popped up. It's Larry again. It sure. is, is a TDMA necessary for a temporary routine vegetative debris storage, uh, such as branches from shoulders and parks to be stored until it's chipped and hauled? So it sounds like it's a normal routine, not an emergency. emergency. Yeah, a TDMA can only be used during an emergency. Um, it can't be used for your routine, let's say, leaf or brush pickup from residents. Uh, the TDMA is only allowed to be used after a, generally a storm event. So I guess, I guess there's some question on, okay, if there's a routine of just storing some uh, brush in a park until the chipper gets there, at what point does that become regulated? Um, actually, it, it, it's kind of always regulated. If uh, a lot of municipalities have what we call an uh, exempt recycling area, where if you do a usual, you know, a usual leaf or brush pickup, um, there's an area where you are allowed to store that type of material for a certain amount of time until it can be chipped or removed. Um, and there's usually limitations to how much can be stored at any one time and for how long. Um, but that is uh, not so much regulated, but you do have to apply Notified, for the exemption. Yeah. It's a like a one-page form, 
and it goes to our uh, recycling group mm -hmm. for approval. Yep. Okay. Uh, I had a, one question as it was brought up. Uh, you mentioned Green Acres. Uh, is that a necessary preclusion from developing a TDMA if they participated in the purchase of a park, let's say? And it's no, not actually, it, it's not. Okay. Um, it's just that if you are going to use, let's say, a park and it's Green Acres encumbered, the only condition is that Green Acres requires that the park still be available for use by the public. So, so this generally means that you have to leave some parking spots open or provide some sort of alternate parking areas. Like you, you just have to may, be able to allow the public to use public the, access to it. Public yeah. access because public funds are usually used for the Green Acres. But Green Acres is probably one of our more flexible groups to work with. Um, it's, it's rare, rare that they deny use of an area just based on green acres. Um, even if you have to use, let's say, the entire park for a TDMA, um, what we would do is add a condition in there. It basically says, because it's encumbered of the green acres, you kind of have to, you know, hurry up and dispose of all the debris as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. But uh, but green acre, but having a green using a green acres property for a TDMA is not an automatic denial. Good, that makes it easier. I I'd like to also just say and to uh, I guess uh, provide some background when Morris County has uh, experienced these uh, disasters in the past. Traditionally, as most people know, we have two transfer stations: one in Port Symphony, one in Mount Olive. Quite often during the major flooding events, our Parsippany transfer station will have flooding surrounding it, not necessarily on the facility itself, but the facility is inaccessible for a day or two until the floods recede. So quite often that facility gets closed and we have to move people to Mount Olive and uh, sometimes during the emergencies we'll work with the uh, department to get the uh, additional, I guess, exemptions from our hours of operation if needed that they've been granted occasionally. Uh, so just want to let people know that most of the time our transfer stations have been able to handle all the debris that gets managed and it just takes a little time for the floodwaters to recede. But traditionally, we've been working with our contractors and have been able to provide the access I can't recall a time over the last 30 years that our transfer stations haven't been able to ultimately provide the disposal access needed over time to handle the debris. It just takes a little time sometimes for the uh, areas to clean up, and that's why the TDMA is a good to stage your material, then you could start bringing it to transfer stations in a manageable fashion. Yes, yeah, very, yeah, very true. It's, you know, 99% of the time, everything can run smoothly after a storm, but, you know, sometimes you get that one storm that just completely overwhelms everything. So, um, and just another thing I wanted to mention, I know most of everyone here works with, I guess, recycling. So, if you're, let's say, not the person who's going to be responsible for going through the TDMA process and applying. Uh, most likely, um, it might also involve your public works department or your office of emergency management coordinator. Uh, sometimes all three groups work together to come up with a suitable location and to fill out the form. So I encourage you to reach out to those other two groups as well to get their input for the TDMA. And I see so, this, I'm sorry, I see this ahead. question just popped up. Uh, sure. Can a licensed compost facility be used as a TDMA? Um, yes, yeah. usually. Um, the part of the compost is, if you use your compost facility for 
normal, let's say, you know, branch leaf pickup, if you also use it for a TDMA, you're going to have to kind of keep the storm related debris separate from your usual composting activities. And this is for mostly for FEMA accountability because they're going to uh, want to know what cost you incurred specifically for the storm related debris, how much you accepted, how much you disposed of. So um, we can usually approve a uh, compost facility for a TDMA location as well, but just be aware that you would have to keep everything separate. Thanks. Okay, so I just want to say, you know, if you, you know, take away a few things from this presentation, just I can't stress you, you TDMAs must be approved by us before you start using them. Uh, I encourage you to submit your applications sooner rather than later. You know, don't wait until an event is forecasted to occur because that's when we start getting an onslaught of applications. And if you need help, you know, just feel free to reach out. I'll be happy to help you. That's great. Thanks so much, Brady. We really appreciate we really appreciate you taking the time and um, going over all this important information. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you very much for having me, Liz. So our next guest speaker is Joshua Alzona, and he is the customer success manager at Recycle Coach. Um, excited to have him uh, talk about Recycle Coach. Welcome, Joshua. Thank you for having me, I'm Liz, Larry, everyone at MCMUA as well. So um, as thank you for the introduction too. I am Joshua. I am the customer success manager at Recycle Coach, and um, I'm going to speak about our platform and how we can help, and um, you know, just go through the features as well. Um, everyone, can everyone see the screen and hear me? Okay. Yes. Yes. Great. Thank you. So, um, a little brief um, talk about Recycle Coach. So we know um, we've been speaking about it for years. That sorry, that recycling is broken. Uh, we're talking about, you know, really poor recycling rates, um, some some programs even stopping in certain parts of the U.S. as well. So we're really trying to tackle a big issue on contamination. So um, we did a study and we found out that, you know, only 40 percent of people don't that put in their recycling bin. They usually put things that don't belong. So this really costs the city money, the municipalities money and also really, you know, showing increasing fees about you know extra processing and what to do with these items and you know what to do when items are contaminated as well so the njd um, with their agreement um it's been in effect since 2017 well right at the end of 2017 so 2018 was the first year and it is a multi-year agreement and is good for seven years from there as well and you know every new jersey municipality has access all the counties have access to this as well. We have 60% plus um, of the population represented in New Jersey that's using Recycle Coach, and anyone in Morris as well um, is it, it is available to them. You just need to contact us, and we can get you started. So, what does Recycle Coach provide? So, uh, we provide smartphone app. So over here, you know ready downloadable and it just put in your address and it put you in your city or your town that's in, available and also available as a website widget so this one's from the morris county uh, you can um if a, if a resident doesn't have access to a smartphone app they can access the internet and go to their town their town website or you know once available on the mcmua website if given access to it as well um, I'm just going to have to move here because uh, the the WebEx window is blocking my view. So it's a it's a tool to communicate with residents and educate them. Sorry. And to really make um, recycling sim simple and easy to easy to understand. And, you know, for clients, you do have an admin portal that you can provide all this information and disposal information 
disposal instructions, as well as sending notifications to your residents who are using the smartphone app or the web app sign up by email. And so this is what one of the other features too. So we have the walk code square search tool and it's over here. And this is every item that you can think of a resident can search for. And depending on the town rules or the county rules, we'll have the answer. So we just provide it to them as well. So here's an example. So oh man, I'm just gonna have to move this as well. So it really helps residents, you know, we really want to help towns, you know, um, decrease the contamination rates. So you get instant search results once this one's for styrofoam containers. You get drop off locations for items that accept certain uh, for centers that accept accept certain items, say hazardous waste, motor oil, um, even big bulky items. So if you want to direct it to, you know, a scrap metal facility, you can have that in here on the, the smartphone app and it will be represented down here. And I'll don't worry, I'll give a little short demonstration as well, so long as it works in the WebEx as well. Collection requirements, so, you know, how to properly set out materials to, for them to have collected as well. So they'll all be linked there as well. And there definitely are a lot of other resources as well with links and just like over here for styrofoam, what happens next um, after it's collected or after it's dropped off to these, you know, foam pack industry so we're really educating residents not just at collection but also post collection so they're really un understanding what's going to happen to their materials and what their impact will be another feature is you know this is the calendar feature so the calendar features are automated with um, scheduled notifications so um, over here so a resident you know They'll, they'll be informed whenever there's going to be an upcoming collection. So over here is an example of upcoming reminder for garbage or upcoming reminder for recycling. Um, they'll be notified 12 hours before the collection. So that's defaulted, but they can also um, edit that. Maybe they want to be reminded 24 hours, you know, the day before or a week before if it's like a yard waste collection as well. So really reduce inbound calls and um, questions about, oh, when's their next recycling day? When's the next cardboard collection? Excuse me. When's the next event, shredding event? So here's a personalized calendar. So um, it really is, um, if there's a town that has more than one zone, so depending on their address, we'll put them in the right zone and they'll only see what's relevant for them. So this is an example of Parsippany. So we'll get weekly collections over here on Tuesday and suddenly on Wednesdays we moved. Um, and then over here, once you click onto these, click onto this, you get to, you would be taken to a page to see what those um, icons actually mean in their colors. So it's garbage, recycling, and yard waste. Have it, uh, have it there on Tuesday, 7 a.m. And really streamline, you know, the communication. So you can send residents. So this is different to the reminders. You can send residents um, alerts. So over here, um, if it, say if there's a delay in a certain zone, you can compile using the admin portal, compile a message saying, hey, um, there's there's been a delay due to some inclement weather, so don't have put your items back in. So you can really communicate with them um, or communicate to the town about a paint drop off date over here as well. So directly to their smartphone app and they're opted in. An example of something like last year during the pandemic so this is all sent in new jersey as well so that was like bulk cleanup dates of change due to what's happened to the pandemic like only cardboard was being accepted you know this change was covid related and so um, we saw this feature he utilized heavily not just by new jersey clients but all of our clients about you know postponement to hazardous waste days um, um, over here postponed to covid19 over here to inclement weather, we had one. Um, I know New Jersey was hit fairly hard with a storm earlier in February. So that was being utilized a lot about um, cancellations and when, when's the next upcoming collection day for those cancellations as well. So PMUA close to severe weather. So due to tropical, the tropical storm last year as well, um, those, those um, areas were being affected, they were being notified directly. So only the areas that were affected here 
um, the PMUA was able to hit just those zones that being affected and not and not um, confuse those who were not affected in different zones as well. And over here, vegetation waste collection being canceled. As well as um, sending sending your residents information and communicating with them, your residents can so also utilize the report a problem feature as well. So you can, um, they can report issues such as missed collection and you get sent to directly to the contact who will be taking care of that or to another contact. It can be sent to more than one contact. So if there's a boss and there's someone below that that can um, that's dealing with these matters. And other issues too, like we, we use, we work with a lot of public works departments and coordinators. So um, why not get your residents working for you? Like when they see um, an issue of graffiti somewhere, um, they can report it using the app, the pothole at a certain street, instead of um, having your team going out, look and fixing up potholes. They can use the app to report that as well. And the best part about it is, you know, this app is at no cost to anyone in New Jersey. It's all paid for by the NJDEP, so long as the contract's in effect. So what you get is the What Goes Where tool, the collection reminders, as well as, you know, the actual calendars that's in effect, the personalized calendars over here based on address, news notifications, um, notifying your residents, whichever zone or all zones, you can do that. Every town has that feature. Report a problem. You don't have to utilize it, but you know, getting your getting more out of the app is definitely advocated by us. And as well, it's available in Spanish. So if you, um, you know, it's an official second language over in the USA. So the NJDP has provided the information to be available in Spanish as well. How to use it? So you know, this is our admin portal so I, I will go through this briefly as well so um, you can look at your user reports see how many people have downloaded the app you know how many are on your website how many have signed up by um, using the pdf download so we provide that with a website widget version as well it, <clears throat> and look at peer reports per your municipality as well um not sure if this was going to work but here's an example of how to send a notification And that's the example of the, how to send notifications. You can add events as well. So send an email to our team and you know you get notified with these changes as well. Um, so upcoming um, schedules. Um, so if there's, a, if there's a change in Labor Day, you'll get notified the next three months. Um, so what's, what's today, May? Um, in May, you'll get notified in the next three months if there's any upcoming changes that's on your calendar. And you can confirm with us as well um, because the team is responsible for making those changes on making those changes on the calendar. Sorry. Joshua, excuse me. Yes, yes. So I just wanted to ask, um, so the person who, it, let's say in a municipality, the person who is the designated administrator would be able to actually provide emergency notifications and or changes and it's quite easy for that person to do so, correct? Yes, yeah. correct. Okay, and they can also, I know that recently we had a lot of, um, unfortunately, uh, problems with the battery situation. Um, Atlantic Coast Fiber, fibers actually burned down possibly due to um, the lithium batteries. And I know that Cheryl from our office did speak with you or someone um, about this. And that might be something 
that is a point of interest or information to get out to residents. And that would be something that they could actually have on Recycle Coach, correct? A message about yes, this? Yes. Okay. Yes, correct. Thank you. Thank you. And um, a great, uh, we're at a slide where we're talking about adding and modifying materials as well. So to add materials that's still um, conducted by the Recycle Coach team, but then you can modify materials. So over here, um, you can find a material. So if you're in those um, lit lithium batteries or et cetera, um, you can just change the disposal information on there to really, so anytime someone searches for that, and then you can have a custom custom disposal instruction to really notify your residents and highlight what could be the problem is and what to really do with it. Um, with issues like that, um, because the app is usually re scheduled to remind people, you know, a pop-up notification would be really good to, to let them know about that too. So. So initially, if we have not set up, um, if it's a new town, we will set up the data for you and customize it on your website, and then you can approve the changes. And then afterwards, you will have access to the admin portal where you can make these changes on your own on the fly as well. So you won't need our approval to make those changes for your town. As always, you know, we provide marketing support. Our success, your success is also our success. So we provide as much um, templated material for your town in order to publish and make Recycle Coach visible. So we provide digital media as well as um, media design, traditional media. So we've done, um, we've done, uh, I think Burlington County one, did a, a, a flyer not a flyer or a poster on on their recycling trucks saying, you know, risk download recycle coach as well. So that's countywide, but you know, you know, where we've been able to provide those type of um, design for something as big as, you know, a big flyer on on a truck. As always, you know, being a smartphone app and a digital solution, we provide digital media. So um, trying to trying to increase your user base by using digital media is always very organic because they have a smartphone they'll more likely download the app so we have all of these fully available with our marketing team as well and all part of the package that the njdp pays for we have video sure. ads. i'm not going to go through these um sure. you know i'll provide i'll provide this um powerpoint if to to the MCMUA so they can distribute it as well. And then you'll be able to find the links on this. Joshua, there's a question I see. Someone asked. How Sorry, you... just one moment, one moment. Okay, no problem. Yes. yes. What's the question? Okay. Try to set oh, up this... recycle code on Android. I wouldn't accept me entering my zip code instead of. I don't I don't how do you access the admin portal? Oh, how to access the admin portal? Um, Recycle Coach will need to um, provide access to that, like create an account for this for the coordinator of that town. So after that, then it'll be up to the court respective coordinator to set their password, and then you you, you will be able to have access afterwards as well. So David, who asked the question, if you're not sure if if you already have an account and you're active, I guess you need to just. Uh contact yes. recycle coach and they'll work it out with you but if you don't have an account yet you first need to figure out how to get it set up and get started okay thanks okay. Josh. great and we just want to make sure that you're supported every every step of the way you know we're here for your success all towns all counties and the entire state um you're not alone in user acquisition. You know, we want to get organic referrals from neighboring municipalities as well and get give expert advice and consultation on what works and what doesn't. And provide experiences with other NJ municipalities that what is working, what is not. So, you know, we've been with the we've been working with New Jersey for a long time, like um, four years now with the state and also other counties and other towns, even even as far back as 2013. So um we we've been representing new jersey for a long time and we feel like we can provide really good 
best practices for those who really want to increase their user base. And that is my presentation. So um, let me see if I can, I have, I have the smartphone app here. Let me see if I can share um, what it looks like now. Cause um, we've done a, a new design. Uh, let me see here, sharing Microsoft. Let me see if I can share something else. Okay. So to open up the app and this is this for Parsippany and this is the new look now. Um, so over here, you'll be able to see your calendar, search what goes where, search for an search. item. And do start home. over here and then scroll down to see the collection requirements it's usually taken with garbage so dispose of garbage etc for set out time and it's collected bi-weekly garbage and then you can also view the calendar over here this is uh you know a scrollable calendar view or you can see the monthly view as well and then over here what how it appears or Parsippany. You can scroll through the months, go find out June, July as well. And then you can even look at what these, uh, what, they, what the icons and colors would mean as well. As you see throughout the month, you can keep scrolling. You can report an issue. So this is the report a problem. Um, this is the templated ones for all of Recycle Coach because um, if we have issues with the app, we want we want residents to report them to us as well. And over here, if you go to your account in the settings and then My Places, you could even choose another city. So choosing another city, maybe I'll go, oh, what's another one? Maybe I'll go Randolph. Or maybe I'll go Mount, Mount Olive. choose again choose which language as it's available in two choose the zone i'm just going to choose the example and then oh put me in the appropriate zone i'm gonna, not going to take the survey for now and now i'm in wednesday zone and i can view my calendar as well and see how it looks for wednesday Let's see over here and over here it says brush and leaf. Interesting. Brush and leaf on Sunday. Um, and there's new, new, um, new information where you know we wanted to know you know why recycling is important to you. These are These blogs are available that's on from our website. And over here, if you click here, this is where notification would appear. So if someone, um, someone, if a coordinator sent a notification, it will appear. There will be a, you know, an alert over here at the bell. And then you just click here. This is the closing the food waste webinar that was sent by the NJDP. And also the safe battery disposal, which was sent by the NJDP also about um, talking about the issues with batteries, especially lithium batteries over here. You know, lithium batteries in particular make them bust. So. Great. That's awesome. And over here, so where was it? Um, over here in the settings, the collection reminders over here, you can remind, hey, I want to customize reminders. You see, pick up and event reminders as well. You can toggle them off, toggle them on. As you see, reminders have been saved. And then you could choose, hey, one day in advance, two day in advance, 12 hours in advance, one hour in advance as well. So if I want to wake up at 6 a.m., you know, I, I'll get an reminder for that and you can have reminders for these as you see hhw events in, in morris county um community shred day special pickups awesome and that's, that's and that's that's my great phone app. Uh, let me stop sharing this and there was a question joshua do you also offer a website platform which i think yes, yes. um let me stop how do i stop sharing this one okay sharing 
Um, yes, we do a website platform. So, um, sorry, MJ. So let me share. I'm going to try and share. Guess this Google Chrome one. So this is in Rock Fury. Think over here if I can find it. Where is it? Sanitation and recycling. Maybe this is in here. And over here, Rock Fury in Morris County. Same info, same type of same features. So styrofoam. Search over here. This is also being redesigned. So um, this is the whole design of this is going to change. So go back to home. You can view the schedule um, here. So I'll just do the, again the default one. And over here, Friday, you can click on one of these, find out you know more information, what to do on the curb, or when to take it out on the curb. Have space over here, Pacific Troy Hills. So all all county event show for every town in Morris. And you can stay informed, even sign up by email over here to get those emergency notifications. So I'm just going to do the cycle coach. Solve the captcha because we want to know if, you know, we don't want robots signing up on your, on this and just sign up, click sign up. And then whenever, um, the coordinator from Roxbury or even the Morris County sends something out to throughout out all the county. I will receive that notification by email. So, um, so long as the widget is available on the website, um, residents can sign up by email on receiving those notifications or even receiving reminders too. So I just want to know 12 hours before by email when to receive a recycling reminder. So I'll we'll get that Thursday at 12. Great. And, and lastly, I'll just on this briefly um so uh, let me oh sorry sorry about that just one moment and this is how the admin portal appears and as soon as you get a login this is what you'll see log in see the mobile users you can look a little more closely but the user report, see how many people have installed it by iOS or Android. This is set for a Randolph. Um, as you see, no you web see. app, no web app because the web app isn't up on their website yet. Uh, communication users, only three people by email. Over here is the what goes where. So if you go to categories, it's set up over here for a waste type. Let me see here. I'm not sure why that's not showing. There we go. This is one moment or waste type. So you can search for a waste type, say, look at bulky items only. And this is the information over here and scroll down and say, Hey, you know, place these items and you can edit this, uh, and choose a templated answer or edit this information over here. Place your items at curve next day. Oh, these items are also accepted at recycling center as well. You can, and you know, make the change, press done, and then, you know, that's information with push live. As you see here, MC, MCMUA, facilities, um, events, the bicycle event, et cetera, et cetera. And then you could search for an item too, if you're just looking for one. As you see here, household batteries, lithium. Over here. And then you could go over here and change that description for household batteries as well. Um, and we can, we can go through that and, you know, once, once people start contacting us about, Hey, we want to get started and then we can show them, um, this in more in detail, but yes, um, you will get access to this the, over here, notifications, everyone in every town, every town gets access to this, you know, send a notification, looking at their numbers, um, how many downloads, changing the what goes where, adding events. Okay, um, I will stop sharing now. Um, Alrighty. Let's see here. Um, Alrighty, well. Questions. 
to offer a website platform? Yes. Um, to let me know how to get around this. Okay. Um, Cynthia, that a question, like, uh, I will contact you, um, to let me get your email over here and about your I issue as well. Okay. Any other questions? Yes. Um, it was I a question, to... are towns able to customize a list of material names in what goes where, or is the, is that a standardized list? It is a standardized yes. list. So, um, but we will, we have a very extensive list. So, um, we feel like pretty much every list is covered because what happens is once we, um, we get a material that's not found, um, we, we look at the material and then we add it, we add it to everyone. So it doesn't even have to be in New Jersey or a, that specific town. We we're getting all of our clients working to bolster the what goes where search. So we have like a 98.5% hit rate with the material. So, um, we're, we're sure we'll have you covered. And if not, you know, you can inform us and say, Hey, we want this material and we, you know, we'll take a look at it as well. Thanks. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much, Joshua. We really appreciate your uh, overview of Recycle Coach. Thank you very much for joining us today. And I'm going to ask you to stop sharing your screen and then I'm going to share mine. And um, have a great easy. day. Thank you, everyone. Um, Thanks. And chat, I'll, I'll contact you as well. I'd, I'd just like to mention, but as we go on, it's funny that Joshua kept mentioning styrofoam and I kept seeing foam pack uh, pop up there. It's probably something we need to update. Of course, we just found out like in the last week that foam pack, unfortunately, stopped accepting residential individual drop off of styrofoam at their site in Springfield. So that's our one outlet that uh, just dried up on us. So. We probably need to update that. <clears throat> and secondly, just to, uh, I guess, go over the web platform, just so you know, David, I think it's a very simple embed into any website to get uh, recycle code showing up on your website. So that's really a pleasure once uh, you get the uh, account set up to get it showing up on your website. It's not an issue whatsoever. Um, and while I'm thanking people, I thank all of you our municipal recycling coordinators um, for submitting your municipal tonnage grant reports on time. Um, I know that some of you are brand new to this and it was not easy. So um, I thank you uh, for your patience and your determination. I also want to mention that should you have any changes to your reports, updates, um, if you happen to get more tonnage reports in the interim, um, please be sure to update your report and submit it again by June 15th. And if you have any questions, you can certainly um, contact Erin Jensen and she'll be happy to answer your questions and direct you. And we're going to be talking a little bit about, um, oh, also, I wanted to also thank um, Chris and Cheryl from our office, um, who really did a great job assisting all of you. So thank you both, Chris and Cheryl. Um, I want to bring up some um, something to your attention with regard to the um, 2020 municipal tonnage uh, grant report requirement that municipal coordinators um, must um, take a tour of a class A facility during 2021. Um, if you recall, this was a requirement in 2019 as well. And we, the MUA, arranged tours at Republic Services Recommunity. Um, according to Eric Gabrielson, uh, Republic is not offering tours at this time, and they do not plan any tours in the foreseeable future due to COVID. So I've contacted Erin Jensen um, and and let her know, and I asked uh, for, this was a second request that DEP waive this Class A tour requirement. Um, she said that the DEP will be discussing this during the summer, 
and I will keep you posted, but at this time, Republic Services is not hosting any tours due to the health emergency. And I really don't know how we would be able to schedule 39 tours. Um, you know, if, if DEP decides sometime in the summer or fall that that is still the requirement. Alrighty, moving on. Just wanted to also bring attention to the um, MUA's website. We have um, some requirements for municipal recycling coordinators, and um, we hope to incorporate this into our meetings um, every time we have a meeting. And I know due to the pandemic, we kind of um, haven't been keeping up with some of this. Um, so here are some of the um, requirements and Chris, actually Chris Vidal is going to be talking about them as well. Um, we're actually, I know we used to focus on completing three of the recycling inspections. And um, I'm going to actually let Chris take over from here. And I just want to say that we understand that during COVID, um, you know, we don't expect you to go out and do inspections. If you are able to do so, that's really great. Um, you know, it's, it's not easy, but it doesn't take a lot. And Chris will start talking about it in a moment. Welcome Chris. Hello, Liz. Thank you everyone. So I would like to share with you that according to the Mars County solid waste management plan, Municipal recycling coordinators are required to complete recycling reports and send them to the DEP with a copy to the MUA. Now, I think we can all check that box. Thank you, everyone. Another requirement is that you should create and send notices to waste generators in your town with recycling opportunities and requirements. For residents, this can include your town calendar or your recycling newsletter. For businesses or institutions, the, um, the letter you send requesting recycling tonnage information would count. Also, please send copies of that to the MUA. Another requirement is to do, as Liz mentioned, is to do three recycling inspections in your town. So these can be at businesses, schools, municipal buildings, hospitals, or multifamily complexes. Two of our colleagues have recently completed inspections, Joelle from East Hanover and Kellyanne from Roxbury. Unfortunately, Joelle has lost her voice, so I'm going to briefly summarize her experiences for you. In February, the County Division of Public Health Inspector had seen corrugated cardboard mixed with trash in a commercial waste roll-off in East Hanover. Joelle was invited to join a recycling inspection of this business. She met with the chief operating officer of Vina Salads. The business is located in an industrial complex. Mr. Zoran Illich thought that they were recycling cardboard, but also thought that it was okay to mix recyclables with trash because they would be sorted at the transfer station at a later date. So Joelle explained source separation, mandated recycling, the town's ordinances, DEP regulations, violations, and penalties. She also gave him recycling stickers and trash stickers. So Mr. Ilyich contacted his waste hauler and then surprise, surprise, next thing you know, Joelle receives the tonnage recycling report. And because of this success, she plans to go back and talk to the managers of the other businesses in the industrial complex to be sure that they are recycling right. Now I'd like to ask Kellyanne to give a brief, um, brief little talk about what she's recently accomplished. Hi, Kellyanne. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, I'm real quick just going to talk today about going on inspections, um, whether it's a small or large generator. Um, going on inspections is something I actually enjoy. It's good to be seen and um, businesses know that you're active in town. Um, 
an on-site visit allows me to see what's going on the sites, what they know, what they don't know, and what we need to work on. Um, basically, when we arrive on the location, we just say we're there to introduce ourselves or myself and review the recycling program. The conversation progresses from there. We review the policies. If they're recycling, uh, if they're not recycling, we discuss what's required by law and the steps they can take to get started. Uh, sometimes you have to contact headquarters or the owner of the business to let them know that we stopped in and what's required or recommended. I always emphasize that I'm there to educate, not to punish them in any way. Um, we make it clear that recycling is the law, and if the law is not followed, fines may be imposed. Sometimes that wakes them up a little bit. Um, I do recommend coming prepared. We usually bring stickers. I usually bring the um, mandated recycling flyer, the solid waste and recycling requirements from Mars County, um, a business card, a copy of our ordinance, just so we can leave them with information so they can um, forward that on if they need to. Um, most recently in our town, we've had a little bit of an explosion. We've had quite a few new big box stores. So the recent inspection, we went to Marshall's and Burlington Coat Factory, and both had stated that the cardboard was being discarded, um, but they would notify their corporate headquarters that that shouldn't be the case and they need to remedy that situation. We walk next door, we have a super mega Walmart now in town, um, and we met with a few of the store managers who gave us a tour of the facility, which is great because we kind of walked in in the middle of their day, um, and they talked about their extensive recycling programs. And I found it really interesting that the two managers who have been with the company for some time have really established some good partnerships with um, different uh, programs in the area. So they were helping trying to remove some product from the landfill and they were doing this on their own. This wasn't even driven by corporate, which I thought was really cool. Um, they, for example, they had established um, that selling the, uh, the pet food that's slightly damaged, Walmart won't let them sell it, which I understand, but they've arranged for a couple of the pet rescues in the area to come and take the food. So the food is not being thrown away, which is actually what Walmart advises them to do. So I thought that was really great. Um, and expired food is donated to a number of churches and soup kitchens uh, in our town social services. So some really good things they're doing, which again, on their own, which I thought was wonderful. Um, and then eventually uh, some time passes and I go back and follow up uh, email or I actually just randomly stop in, which is always good to do. Um, and I guess honestly, just to say that um, inspections, they're not, they're not scary. You know, I, I find them entertaining and educational. I always learn something. I establish some relationships. So I would just recommend getting out there and meeting with the businesses, help them improve the recycling policies and tonnage numbers. And ultimately that benefit benefits you and your town. That's it. Thank you. Cynthia, <clears throat> Cynthia has a question. Is there a content of a recycling investigation or is it up to the MRC to uh, do it to come up with themselves? Do you want to answer that, Chris? We do have information on our website on the MRC page. Also, um, we were glad to send you a brief survey um, that you can use to fill out. We're glad to work with you. As Kellyanne said, while recycling inspections may sound terrifying, they're actually an excellent chance to educate businesses and institutions about recycling requirements, regulations, and opportunities. And they're a great way to introduce yourself and offer assistance. And they're a good tactic to increase your tonnage numbers. So if you would like to email either Joelle or Kellyanne, please feel free to. I am always willing to go out and help you and uh, give any assistance. So just contact us. Chris, there's a question just popped up asking sure. uh, to please clarify when they need to tell us about the investigations that they did, do we need a copy of all the letters or just like the individual like template that they sent to each one? You, is this for the tonnage report? That letter to businesses? We just need a sample. Okay. I'm not sure if it's the tonnage report or not. But. If for the inspection for the inspe for the inspections, if you yeah. could um, let us have like a summary, that would be great. Okay. So we can check it off the list. 
Yes, it is the Detonic report. So, okay, thanks. Yeah, just, just, and a lot of, um, it's a lot of coordinators already do that. They'll send in a copy, and we have that on our website also. Or just, or just email us if you have any questions. Thanks so much, Chris. Okay. Sorry. I um, just wanted to mention on behalf of Anthony Marone, um, the 2021 hazardous waste event days for this year, which you've all actually received this information. Just want to reiterate that we do have um, the four events scheduled for more information. The telephone number is at the bottom as well as our website. And I just want to make sure that everyone understands we are not accepting electronics at these uh, drop off event days and um, residents can certainly visit our website and um, make an appointment to just come to our permanent household hazardous waste facility, which is located in Mount Olive. Um, I also want to um, mention that we are working on a new uh, no plastic bags campaign. Um, I'm sure that many of you are struggling with the same thing that we are. Uh, plastic bags are contaminants in the recycling stream and it's not easy to uh, get residents to comply. So we're working on a campaign for our curbside towns and um, I'm sure that many of you see this type of uh, contamination going on at the curb. It's very frustrating. And um, we will be working with our curbside municipalities. Um, we're gonna hopefully launch this, uh, this program later this year. And we plan to work uh, in partnership with our curbside municipalities. Uh, the goal is to uh, get the word out to the residents, heavily advertise through municipal websites, newsletters, and other means. Okay, 10 tires, um, thank you. So, I'm sure you'll hear more about this and um, hopefully we'll be able to share um, with those towns that are not in our curbside recycling program. Hopefully we'll be able to share um, our plan and um, provide you some some hints and uh, advice about how to go forward with this. So I once again like to thank our guest speakers. I'd like to thank uh, MUA staff, especially Larry. And um, this meeting will be recorded and on uh, mcmua.com. Um, it's one classroom credit and a half of a non-classroom credit for CRPs today. If you joined us by telephone, please email Cheryl Birmingham uh, with your telephone number so we can go ahead and There's add you as, it, as attended. So yeah. thank you everyone and um, hope you have a nice spring. Thank you. Thank you.